Hello and welcome to Rolling Homestead and today I'm going to go through and show you how I prune my pepper plants. So stick around. Alright guys, so today we're going to do some pruning and the reason why mostly that I'm pruning this year is because it is April 14th and there's still over a foot, foot and a half of snow and there's probably a three foot snow drift and right over the top of my garden. And what happens when you prune is these are two weeks old, you can see them starting to have their new flowers here. But what's going to happen is it's going to give me that extra time that I need to have these guys inside the house without losing any plants because now it's they're going to concentrate on getting their roots stronger and they're going to do a split so what I like to do is these are your two leaves when your your seed is going through the process it stores its energy okay so when it germinates and, and sprouts everything is is started with these two seeds or leaves I'm sorry the all the photosynthesis to make everything else grow starts here these are your first two adult leaves right here and here and then obviously as you go up so what I want to do is I want to keep these and I want to keep three adult leaves so I got one two this is the lowest so I'm going to cut and, and I know it looks like I'm butchering I'm gonna cut right there that one is trimmed off so this one here is tiny, but as you can see, a one, two, three. So technically, if I wanted to, I could cut right here. And that's going to give me, because I'm looking at right now, is I'm going to, we're really going to have to push, guys. Our season this year is really being, is going to be dampered, I think. And because of what world affairs are, is going on right now, I'm really thinking it's going to be a necessity to support ourselves. So you got one, two, so you got two, three. I'm going to trim this one right here. And what does pruning do? Well, what's going to happen is you're going to see these leaves are going to grow up, but these guys here, on this one if you look here and you look here that's gonna fork out and it actually helps to promote better growth on the stock makes the stock thicker and wider to allow that uh, the strength and it becomes more of a bush instead of a plant that's what pruning is about so we got here we got we got one two it's pretty tight Now, this guy, I'm going to break my rule and go like that. He still has four leaves to collect light to grow. So um, I, I like to do the, the five or the three big leaves like I've been doing, but he still has enough there to, to accommodate. All right, so this one here, you got one. So here's your three. So I'm going to take and leave uh, like so. One, two, three. This one's going to be kind of easy. Like so. So you got one, two, three. So the top half is going to you got one, two, three, right there. And all this guys can go right back in the compost. Feed it to the chickens. You know, it's fresh greens. Let's go one, two, three. And what I'm gonna do this year is I am going to leave two of my pepper plants. 
So I'm going to take two sweet peppers and I'm going to take two jalapenos and I'm not going to prune them and I'm not going to do anything. And I'm going to show you the difference of what pruning does compared to non-pruning. Sometimes you can luck out and the plant will do it on its own. It will actually split. You're not hurting your plant, it doesn't do anything to it, it just puts the energy back in its stock and ooh, this guy here is uh gotta get him to stand back up. So guys, one of the things, the other reasons why I'm doing this is uh with all the stuff that's going on, we have talks of, of, of going to World War III, we have uh, um, nuclear weapons going and you know everybody's getting an itchy finger. There's no, there's nothing like having to be able to support yourself. Um, if you can grow something in a, in a bucket like these are, if you can grow it in, in a, a pot or anything, to get you that extra vegetable. So the main thing that you guys got to be looking at is greens because um, the Swiss chard is a really easy one to grow, kale, all these kind of greens to help you get your nutrition. But if it's something that is nuclear, there's nothing that anybody can do because it's all going to become the, the junk in a hurry. But times are going to get tough. It's just a, it's it's going to happen. Food. I mean, this cold weather here like this, this is going to shoot the cost of living uh, for vegetables and stuff because we're going to have such a tight growing season. It's going to shoot that price right up, and it's going to make it really hard for those people that aren't are not fortunate to have fruits and vegetables that they can grow on their own, and. I think there's going to be a, a, a shortage in vegetables this year. I'm, I'm hoping I'm wrong. You got the floods and stuff uh, in the south. You had all that going on there um, up here. You know we should be we should all see grass. I shouldn't see any more white. Global warming. But anyway, if you can try something and you can get some flowers going, if you can get a pot going, or if you can you know. A raised bed, you know, you take a couple, take a couple non-treated boards, build yourself a raised bed, and you, you know you can throw some dirt in there. Um, patio beds, I've seen those that you can make them look really nice. Any way to get you some vegetables is going to be a plus because right now here in northern Wisconsin, before on a normal on a good good year, I've got 119 to. Uh, 124 days of actually growing and that's at putting my vegetables out Memorial weekend it's going to be kind of tight when it's already April 11th and we still got a foot and a half of snow on the ground and thicker back behind the garden so it's going to make it really tough and if you do have a, a, a garden it's going to be one of those things where it's going to all have to go in at once, which even makes it more difficult. But we'll, we'll do with what God has given us. That's how it works. Um, we put our faith in Him, and He will take care of us. So that's uh, the pruning, guys. You really don't have to. And these things right here, this is actually from when I did my microgreens, because I redid my, I reused my soil after the microgreens. And that's what that is. That's not weeds from the dirt. But as you can see, this is really easy to do. And it's going to give me that chance to have them in the house for another, well, you look at it, I'm going to add at the most here, or I should say at the least, it's going to be another month on the grow table. So, in a month's time, stuff can grow pretty big. This guy's doing really well. On tomatoes, guys, too, while I'm, while I'm sitting here pruning, 
you don't want this this here if you guys can see me doing this um, we don't want stuff that's going to be touching the dirt because that allows the air not to move through there can cause fungi and issues stuff like that so I'm just gonna trim this guy off here and I'm gonna trim this guy off right here and then what I do is I just chop this stuff up make straight compost now especially on tomatoes we're gonna get this guy out of here you can see he's trying to start here and here already. This guy here. With tomatoes, guys, the more fluid you have, or leaves, allows for actually a sweeter tomato. This one here, this is a sucker here. Because see, your plant comes up, your leaf comes down, here's a sucker. So we get him out of there. Come on, let go. This was about pruning your peppers, but I just happened to look over here. But this will allow light to get to the plants a lot better. Um, And it won't allow them to rot. There's one over here that's getting pretty low. The rule of thumb is you want to keep your uh, your leaves from your tomatoes at least a foot away from the bottom of the base. So this guy is pretty good. I mean, he's got a. You got to also be careful because of where your top is here. Um, but if you look at him here, you know. It, this could be his top. He actually split right here. Here's a little sucker coming out. Here's a, on this side here, there's a sucker right here. But with tom tomatoes, it's pretty easy. They're pretty forgiving. But the more the more leaves that you take off, the less sweeter your tomato is going to be, so they say. I have not tried that out yet. We'll find out this year. This guy here is like a picture perfect because he's got a flower here, I mean a leaf here, leaf here, leaf here, leaf here. So he's pretty easy to, to figure out where to trim at. And as you can see already, he's got another one coming out here, he's got another one coming out there, and he's got another one already coming out there. So that was pretty uh, pretty easy. So like I was saying, we we need to we need to look at what we can do for ourselves. Um a lot of places in the world depend on us for foreign aid. We're spending a million dollars or more in foreign aid. Um, so there's a lot of places out there that couldn't survive without our support and our finances. So when uh, if a war does come out, things are going to get tight. Things are going to get hard. You need to be thinking about how you can support yourself. And it's not in survival mode, it's, it's thriving. I would rather sit here and thrive than just survive. You can see too guys, is there, there's a big difference. Look how thick and hardy this stock is and then this one. You know, so some, some plants need that extra little boost. Here's a nice thick hardy stock. Another perfect one offset. It's got the ones in the center there. So we're just going to take his top right off. Give him a haircut. So 
so some of the vegetables that I would that I would recommend to grow um, one is red sweet peppers the red sweet peppers are full of, of vitamins that our body can use and they're really help they're really good at helping to process the minerals so that we can take them so peppers would be one of my go-to plants the other ones would be cabbage obviously because that can make my probiotics I would do uh, musk melon because there's a lot of vitamins in that and then I would look at, at some of my uh, like thyme, thyme is a multi-purpose. It's for cooking, but it's also medicinal. It has medicinal purposes. It is considered a herb, and it's also considered a medicinal plant. Oregano is also another one for cooking, and it can be used for medicinal. Lavender is another one. Problem is, is lavender is for a warmer environment. So it's harder for me to get lavender to grow obviously then it would be because it's actually a zone 8 what would be some other ones that I would rosemary would be another one obviously uh, then I would start thinking about the tomatoes and stuff like that but green beans so if I was in an area that I couldn't grow or I didn't have a, um, a garden and all I had was an area to make a box, I would start doing some companion planting. I would put some peppers in there. I put a couple green bean plants in there and I use pole beans so that they could go up. Instead of having a bush and taking up your space of your box, I would shoot them up. Same thing with my tomatoes is I get an indeterminate tomato plant that I knew was going to shoot up and I would and that's what I'm doing here is I'm teaching him to go along these sticks instead of bushing out he's continuously going up and then when he gets to the right height I'll, I'll stop him by cutting off the head that's a good way that you can use a smaller area and get more vegetables out of there same thing with my uh, I put a couple pepper plants in there when you when you prune you're gonna get and you have the right soil mixtures that you that I keep talking about and you have a good soil uh, you'll have the right nutrients in that box where your plants will, fur, will really fur, uh, flourish flourish sorry and some of the things that you can use to do that is uh, worm castings is a really good natural way to fertilize your, your, your beds osmolite is another good one it's a rock dust and um, that's another really good way for you to put the minerals in the ground so your plants can absorb them. So if you can get um, some compost from somewhere, something like that, some good organic material, and make your box and start with the, that kind of stuff, worm castings, compost, osmite, uh, bone meal, mix that all into your box and you're going to have good rich organic soil and your plants will flourish and you won't have to have as many plants but you'll get more production out of it and that's kind of what I'm looking for here um, because we have a lot of things that we need to think about shortly here so anyway those would be my choices as I would as some plants that I know that I can do some companion planting um, one thing neat about the tomato is as it's going up and you've got the 12 inches on the bottom yeah I could put some radish down here um, onion would be another one uh, garlic would be another one that I would want because a garlic is an antibiotic okay onion and garlic are brother and sister they go side by side together they work really well with each other so I would I would do some uh, soft necks because soft necks you, you plant in the spring you can harvest them in the fall so there's something that you can do quick so these are some of the tricks that will, can help somebody out that doesn't have an area to, um, to build a big garden but has a little space that they could do a box. And you could really put a lot of vegetables in that little box just by um, 
shooting them up, reading reading the difference between a, a deterrent and a uh, indeterrent plant. You know, on tomatoes, a deterrent plant it gets a certain height and it stops. Okay, an indeterrent will consistent you know, will just keep right on and going. So by trimming off some of the suckers, giving it its its air on the bottom, and allowing the, the sunlight and light to hit the leaves, it allows that plant to flourish and get to its full potential. Same thing with pepper plants. You can uh, tr you can trim a pepper plant or actually prune a uh, pepper plant probably three times before it actually would go on the ground. Obviously, this guy needs to go. If I would get into this, is only the second trimming, or this is the first trimming here. I'm sorry. This is first. But if I would trim this guy again, I'm gonna have to start looking at a second pot because. This cup is going to be too small. It's going to get ripped. Or it's going to get ripped round. So those are the things that you know we want to look at. Um, now the other thing that I would I would think about is a cayenne pepper, uh, and the reason why I say cayenne pepper instead of a jalapeno or some other thing is a cayenne is actually it has medicinal purposes. It is good for the heat. But it also is medicinal wise and it's it's used throughout the world for that purpose. So if there was one plant of the pepper hot pepper plant uh, hot pepper plant that I would choose, I would choose a cayenne pepper. Just for that fact. If you guys want to look them up, look up what uh hot actually the truth about peppers and the hot peppers and how they help you out, you can go check that out on Google. So there is my pruning guys. I got another whole two flats to go, but I wanted to get this in here because they were getting to the point where uh, they need to be done. So guys, I hope this helps you with your, your pepper plants. It gives you an idea what you can do with them, uh, especially if you're in Wisconsin. It's going to be a very rough spring and we need to do what we can. And because of the way things are looking in the world, and with everything with coming up here with World War III being pronounced and everything like that, if something like that would happen, we need to make sure that um, we have the ability to support ourselves. I really don't believe that it could turn into a, a nuclear fight because I don't think anybody would win that. And even people in power, you know, they. I think they see that too. If you hit that button, it's all over for everybody. It's just not one one area. Everybody's affected by it, and for many many years. So it's a it's a dangerous game of chess, is what that is. So guys, you guys take care. God bless, and we'll see you on the next one.